This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yet once again, we come to your home, right there where you are, bringing you the ever-living, powerful word of God, the word that will transform your life, the word that will bring change. Isn't it so good, so beautiful, when you learn to depend on the word, when you learn to rely on the word, that your struggles come to an end, your worries come to an end, your fears come to an end, because the the word says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. They are not thoughts of evil. They are good thoughts to bring you to the place of your destiny, to the expected end. It is so sweet when you learn to depend on the Lord, on the word of God. Because you know this word will never change. This word will never lose its power. This word never loses its authority. It is forever settled in heaven. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. And as we speak it here on earth, we establish it here. We are considering the apostle and the high priest of our confession, the man Christ Jesus. That is the one we are considering. Who was in the beginning with God to make the beginning. He was in the beginning together with God to make the beginning. That's why the word of God will never lose its power because it was there before the beginning. To make the beginning. So I want to welcome you to our communion service once again. This Thursday, I pray that you have your Bible, you have your Bible and your notebook and your pen ready, and you have the elements ready so that we can partake of the communion together and receive the word of God. I've got quite a number of scriptures that I intend to give you tonight, so you will need to be quick and fast and write them down, and you can read them later so that you can be able to put them together and see how the story builds of what what has been accomplished. But before we hit the road, let me ask Joyce to come and say, bring in her greetings and uh, then we hit the road. Come on, Joyce. Amen. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us for this communion service. Let us know where you are joining us from. Let us know what this word is doing in your lives. It's always our joy to hear what God is doing in your lives because it assures us of this one thing, that the word of God works. And when he sends this word to us, it never goes back to him void. So thank you for always opening up your homes to us to come to you on Thursday. Kindly speak to us, talk to us, and let us know what God is doing. Thank you so much. You are in for a great time because the word of God is transfor transformational. It brings in transformation. As you soak it in your situation, as you soak the word into your spirit, your life will never be the same again. David declares and says, Your word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It is the word of God that keeps you from sinning. It's the word of God that keeps you from failing. It's the word of God that keeps you from condemnation. So learn to hide the word of God in your spirit. Learn to put the word of God in your heart. This is what will catapult you to the next level. It is not the songs you sing. Uh, songs are good. I'm not despising songs. No, 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 no. I'm not, hymns are good. But it is not the songs you sing. It is not the stories you hear, but it is the word of God, hiding it into your spirit, making it a part of yourself so that when you speak, it comes out, the word comes out and it brings in change. Remember, we are still considering, we are considering the foundation of our confession, of our salvation, of our homologio in. That's what we are considering. The man, Christ Jesus. He is the foundation of our confession. And this foundation, this foundation is dependent or built, it is built 
on the faithfulness of the word. And then number two, on the finished work of the, at the cross of Calvary. The finished work. And that's what we looked at last, uh, last Thursday. And we want to move a little bit more and look at this work, how it was finished and what Christ was, uh, was able to attain so that to hand to you to hand to you sozo, salvation, to give to you that life, th that life that comes from him. As you get this, this life, this zoe life coming into you, then your, your Kenyan life or your life, whatever you are, is changed and transformed into the life of God, the life of God. So, we said last, last time that anything to do with your salvation, as far as your salvation, our salvation is concerned, it is finished. Jesus cried at the cross and he said, it is finished. Now, how is it finished? I want you to know there is a process. There was a process that Jesus had to go so that he could bring deliverance to you. He could bring in hope to you. Bring in healing to us. I pray that we will move together. We will go together. I'll be a little bit slow today so we can be able to move together and see what Christ has been able to accomplish. I mentioned, I mentioned to you that the work started at Gethsemane. The work started at Gethsemane where the blood was shed where the blood of Jesus was shed. Remember, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. And as the blood is shed and hits the ground, then the ground has got to adjust according to the power of the blood, according to the power of that blood. You know, it was a shame the other day seeing people in parliament hurting one another, fighting until blood is shed. That is, that is, that is, that is, that, that is a shame to, uh, uh, to our nation. It's a shame to this nation that people who are supposed to be making laws can turn around and start fighting and shed blood blood in the, in the house where laws are supposed to be, to be made. I pray that by the grace of that God will open a door for that place to be cleansed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go back. Let's go back to Gethsemane. Forget about our parliament, but let's go to, let's go to, uh, to Gethsemane. Jesus is with his disciples. Let's look at Mark, at the book of Mark chapter number 14. In Mark chapter number 14, Joyce, let's, let's read from verse number 32. From verse number 32, uh, 32 that if, uh, to 36, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. They came to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, He told his disciples, Sit here. Sit here. While I shall pray. While I pray. Sit here because I want to pray. I want you to know this was a serious moment. This was a moment when Jesus knew that now my time has come. There is a work that I need to do. And for me to accomplish this work, I need to pray. Keep going, Joyce. And he taketh with him Peter. He takes and, with him Peter. And James. James. And John. And John. The same guys who are at the mountain of transfiguration. He now collects them. You have seen Moses and Elijah. You wanted to dwell up the mountain of transfiguration. There is something more for you to see. There is something more that you need to, you need to do. I want you to come close to me. He takes with them. Peter and James and John. Yes. And began to be so amazed uh -huh. and to be very heavy. Uh, he wanted to see the, them to see the, the weight of the matter. The weight of the matter. He began to be so to be so amazed and to be very heavy with, with, with what was going on to happen. Okay, let's keep going. And said unto them. He said to them. My soul is exceeding sorrowful. My unto soul death. is exceedingly so sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry he here and so, watch. So you wait here and watch. You wait here and watch 
or pray. Okay, keep going. And he went forward a little. Uh huh. He went a little bit farther. And fell on the ground. He fell on the ground flat. And prayed that if it were possible. And he prayed. He prayed. Part of what he prayed or what he said in prayer was if it were possible. The hour might pass from him. That this hour would pass from him. It was an hour where the world was on his shoulders. The sin of man was on his shoulders. And he is praying, if it is possible for your plan to be done and this to pass away from me. Okay, keep going. And he said. And he said. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. All things are possible unto thee. All things are possible to you. Now, Jesus is not praying in unbelief. Jesus is not doubting God. He is not praying in unbelief. He says, all things are possible to you. Take away this cup from me. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Not what I will. It is not what I will. But what thou will. But what you will. He comes to a point where he says, this weight is too much. This weight is too much. This cup is too heavy. If it could pass from me, that would be my desire. He comes to a point where there is a battle between his will and the will of the Father. Why? Not because he is in doubt, but because there is a deliverance that needs to be made. There is a deliverance that needs to be made for mankind. Because Adam was put in a similar situation in the garden of Eden. When God told him of the fruits of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. My will is don't eat that fruit because the day you shall eat thereof, you shall, you shall surely die. God declared his will to Adam before he even let him let him into the garden. And Adam knows the will of God. What is the will of God? I can eat anything. Every fruit here, I can eat except one. The will of God is I don't eat the, 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 the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is the word of the Lord. That is the will of God. But the enemy comes, when the enemy comes and deceives Eve, and Eve takes and eats. When she takes it to Adam, uh, Adam has got to make a decision. Do I take, do I follow God's will, or do I follow my will, or man's will? And the Bible tells us that Adam took and he ate the fruit. In other words, he decided it is not the will of God that is going to operate now, it is my will. It is my will. So we see man is bound into self. Man is bound into me, myself, and my family. Where we no longer think of others, but we think about ourselves. The battles you find in families are about self. The battles you find in a nation are, are, are about self. Our political differences are about self. It's, there is nothing like ideology. It is just self. So that is the battle that we are facing. Even the battles we face in church, they are about self. But if we could only know that the work at the cross of Calvary finished everything, the process from Gethsemane dealt with our problems, you will be able to rise up and declare, it is not my will, but the will of God. That is what changed the whole scenario. When Jesus said, I know all things are possible with you. If this cup would pass from me, I would be so glad. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. When Jesus prayed that, the Bible tells us that he prayed until he sweat blood. 
drops of blood fell to the ground. And this blood was to deliver you and I from our self-will. That now we can be able to say with Paul, it is no longer I that lives. Look at Galatians 2 and verse number 20. In Galatians 2 and verse number 20, Paul declares and says, look at what he says. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. What is this? He is taking us back to where the work was accomplished, to where the work was finished. I am crucified with Christ, baby. Nevertheless, I Nevertheless, live. I live. I live. Yet not I. But it is not I. But Christ liveth in but me. But Christ lives in me. My friend, it's no longer you. It is Christ in you. Before you say, beat your chest and you say, me, mine, and myself. Know this. It, you are alive, yes. But it is not you. It is Christ who lives in you. Keep going, baby. And, and, the life which, and the life which I live. I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith. I live by the faith. Of the Son of God. Of the Son of God. Who loved me. Who loved me. And gave himself for and me. And gave himself at Gethsemane. He gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. The cup was heavy. It was, it was torturous. But he gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. Therefore, it is no longer I that lives. May that self die. May Christ be manifested in your life. This is the foundation of our confession. This is the foundation of our salvation. That the blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary delivered us from self-will. Now we say it is the will of God. And from there we see Jesus is arrested and he is taken, he is taken to Pilate's court. He is taken to Pilate's court and the Roman soldier on duty that night, he picks the Roman whip picks the Roman whip. And tradition tells us that the Roman whip had some sharp iron at the end. There were many, many pieces and there was sharp iron at the end that when it hit somebody, it got into the body. Stuck, these uh, sharp uh, pieces of iron got into the body and the soldier did not come removing one after the other, but he pulled it. And in the pulling, the body was torn. Remember, when you are condemned to whipping, that was equivalent to being condemned to hanging, uh, uh, to being killed or to hanging on the, hanging, uh, on the rope until you are dead. So the, the, when you, one was condemned to receive the 40 stripes, that was known that one is a dead person, is a gone case. But in the process, God had a plan. In the process, your deliverance was being paid for. Your healing was being paid for. Isaiah the prophet, in Isaiah 53 and verse number 5, had seen this process. This process. Remember, a prophet sees ahead and a prophet can also see backwards. So Isaiah looked 500 years ahead. He looked 500 years ahead and he said these words in Isaiah 53 and verse number 5. But he was wounded. But he was wounded for our transgressions. For our transgressions. And was bruised for our... He was our, bruised for our iniquities. The chest chastisement of our peace was upon him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah, many years before Jesus, 500 years before, he had seen this and he spoke it. And he said, the wounding of Jesus is for our transgression. The bruising is for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. So that when the Roman soldier takes the Roman whip,
and he starts whipping Jesus, those stripes are to bring healing to you. Therefore, your healing is not being paid for when hands are laid on you. Your healing is not lay, being coming upon you when you are anointed with oil. No, your healing was paid for over 2,000 years ago as Jesus received the stripes from the Roman soldier in Pilate's court. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How I pray that this would come to you as a revelation, that it will be revealed from within your spirit. It will be bathed in your spirit that because Jesus received the 39 stripes, 39 stripes. He was condemned to 40, but they always gave 39 so that, because by the time the 40th one was coming, one was dead. So they had to wait to give him the 39 so that somebody is left with some strength to carry the cross outside the city to be crucified there. So Jesus is carrying the cross to be crucified, he's already shed a lot of blood. And they did that so that they would reduce the time one would take on the cross. But Jesus did this for you and myself. That he was wounded with his stripes, you were healed. And I am told, I don't know, but I am told by those who are in the medical field that there are 39 major diseases, 39 major diseases. Of course, the others have come, but they have all their roots. There are many others that have come, but they have all their roots in the 39, 39 uh, major diseases. What does that tell me? That tells me that in the stripes, in the striping of Jesus, God planned that for every major disease, a stripe landed on Jesus, a whip landed on Jesus, and he paid for them all. Let me tell you, my friend, there is no sickness, no disease that is too strong, that is too hard for our master. There is no sickness that was not paid for. God is a God of plan. God is a God of purpose. Your sickness was paid for. By whose stripes you were, we are healed. Peter now comes back after the stripes have taken place in 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. Peter is looking backwards. Isaiah was looking forward. Peter is looking backwards. And what does Peter, uh, Peter say? Who his own self. Who his own self. Bear our sins. Bear our sins. In his own body. In his own body. On the tree. On the tree. Oh, glory to God. My friend, when Jesus hung on that tree, your sins hung there. Your sins were hung there. Keep going, baby. That we being dead to sin. That we being dead to sin. Should live unto righteousness. Should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you are healed. By whose stripes you were healed. Isaiah said it in the present continuous tense. Now Peter comes and puts it in the past tense. Because Peter saw Jesus being, being whipped. He saw the stripes landing on Jesus. Now he can look back and say, yes, when those stripes landed on the back of Jesus, we received our healing. My friend, I speak healing to your body, healing into your situation, healing into your marriage. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. The blood was shed. The body was broken. When we partake of the communion, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. We are declaring the completed work at the cross of Calvary. This is the foundation of our confession. This is the foundation of our salvation. This is the foundation of our homologioing. So when I, we talk of confession, we are not just talking that I confess I have this, I confess I have this, I, I confess this is mine, this is... No, 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 no. It's a deeper revelation. We are saying that 
in confession, you are speaking what God is saying. You are saying the same thing together with God at the same time, at the same place. My friend, you can agree with this word. You can stand on this word that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed and you can receive your healing tonight. It doesn't matter what verdict you have been given. I come to you tonight under the anointing and the authority of the word and say every evil verdict that has been given against you is hereby nullified. I nullify that verdict that has been given to you, that has been put on you, that you will never make it. I nullify that in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you and say to you, your life is changing tonight. As we partake of the communion, there is transformation that is taking place in your life. As you capture this revelation that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. It's already done. It's already paid for. The blood was already shed. It's already shed. It's a done deal, my friend. Your healing is a done deal. Oh, rise up out of that situation and declare it's a done deal. I am the healed of the Lord. Remember, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent Take it by force. Take your healing by force. Take it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We move a little bit faster because of our time. Still in pirate's coat. The soldiers have been whipping him. And in a state of mockery, in a state of mockery, one of the soldiers goes out. And he gets an, uh, some thorns. He gets some thorns and he plates, he prepares a crown of thorns. Uh, look at Mark. Let's, let's go to Mark, Mark 15, 17. Let's look at Mark 15, 17. Mark 15, verse 17. And they clothed him with purple. They clothed him with purple. And plated a crown of thorns. And they plated, they made a crown of thorns. And put it about his head and put it on his head they put it on his head let's hear let's hear what john says in john 19 and verse number two john 19 and verse number two what what does john say and the soldiers plated a crown of thorns. And the soldiers plated a crown of thorns. And put it on his head. And put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. And they put on him a purple robe. Now, what I want us to capture is the, the plating of a crown of thorns. You see, this is in mockery, even in putting on the purple robe. The purple robe was, was a royal Color. The purple is a royal color. The, they, 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 they have been, the Jews have refused that Jesus is not king of the Jews. But Pilate has called him the king of the Jews. So they put the purple robe on him in mockery. They prepare a crown of thorns because there is no king without a crown. And they put it on the head of Jesus. Now remember this is a crown of thorns. So what is going to hold it on the, on the, on the head? It is the piercing of the thorns that pierced on his head, that held the crown on his head. But let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 3 and verse number 18. Let's go to verse number 17. And, and, and unto Adam he said... This is God speaking to Adam. He said to Adam, after Adam had sinned, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you obeyed the voice of your wife. And has eaten of the tree. And you have eaten of the tree. Of which I commanded thee, saying, Which I commanded you. Saying. Saying. Thou shalt not eat of it. You shall not eat of it. Cast is the ground for thy sake. Because of what you have done. Cast is the ground for your sake. In sorrow. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You shall eat of the ground all the days of your life in sorrow. In other words, you are going to work. Okay, go to verse number 18. 
Thorns also. Thorns also. And thistles, shall, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. It shall bring forth to you. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And you shall eat the herb of the field. Okay. What I want you to capture is in Eden, while Adam was in Eden, there were no thorns, there were no thistles. But as a result of sin, thorns and thistles came as part of the curse of the ground because of what Adam had done. So we see in before this, before sin, Adam was, had life in abundance. He ate everything he wanted without even tilling the ground. He had the fruits all over. But now, because of what he has done, you have obeyed the voice of your wife. You have eaten the, of the tree I told you not to eat. So cast is the ground for your sake. What is going to be the evidence that the ground is cast? Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. In other words, that which was supplying to you is now going to oppose you. Is going to resist your supply. That which was, you walked so comfortably, the thorns will tell you you are not going to pass here. The thorns will tell you you, are, you cannot get this one. The thorns will tell you this one is too poisonous. The thorns and the thistles will tell you you, it, you cannot go beyond this point. In other words, they become a limitation. God, in his own plan, he orchestrated that the Roman soldier would come with a Roman whip and, he would, uh, and the other soldier in mockery would go and plate a crown of thorns and put it on the head of Jesus so that blood oozes from the head, falls to the ground and lays a foundation of your deliverance from the curse of poverty, your deliverance from every limitation, your deliverance from every obstacle that is telling you you can't go beyond this point. This is the foundation of our confession. This is the foundation of our salvation. That because of the crown of thorns, blood came out of the head of Jesus. And that delivered us from the curse of poverty. Therefore, I came to say to you, if you would receive this as a revelation and know that God has not cast you, Adam was never cast. The ground was cast on his behalf. Therefore, you are not cast. I come to you and I declare every evil word that has been spoken against your life, against your business, against your prosperity, I declare it null and void Amen. and of none effect at all in the name of Jesus Christ. Why Jesus shed his blood from the head and from the crown of thorns. That was to deliver you and I from the curse of poverty. That which limited you has been broken away. That which kept you from moving forward has been broken away. My friend, it is time to rejoice. It is time to rise up. As we partake of the communion, let this be your rejoicing. Let this be your opportunity to declare, I am free from the curse of poverty. It does not matter how poor your grandfather was or how poor your parents are. You are the man. You are the woman to bring a turning around. You will bring a turning around in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. You will bring a turning point in your life, in your clan, in the name of Jesus Christ. For that is why you got born again. That's why you are the only one who is born again in that family. That you may declare deliverance from the curse, from the curse of poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. That's not the only place that Jesus shed blood. He carried the cross to, the, to, to, uh, to, uh, to Calvary, to, uh, to, to Gol Golgotha. And they laid him on the cross, stretched out his hands, and they put nails on his hands 
and his feet. As they were doing that, blood was oozing out of the body of Jesus, the blood of our deliverance from our sins. It is at that point when Jesus is hanging at the cross, when Jesus is hanging there and the blood is coming from the nail woods, the, from the woods that have been inflicted by the nails. And as that blood falls into the ground, Jesus prays to the Father and he says, Father, Forgive them. Don't lay this on them. Forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. They do not know that they are fulfilling what you, pl you planned before you laid the foundations of the earth. They do not know that they, they, this is for their deliverance. They do not know that this is for their salvation. Therefore, Father, forgive them. Let me tell you, my friend, there is no way you can carry unforgiveness. No way you can carry unforgiveness while Jesus hung at the cross and he said, it is finished. The foundation of our confession is based on the finished work at the cross of Calvary, at the cross of Christ, where Jesus said, it is finished, my friend. It is finished. I come to you to say to you, it is a done deal. It is finished. No effort from a human being can bring salvation. There is no, no doing of a human being can bring salvation. Salvation has been dealt with by Jesus Christ. All this by the grace of God. Not because we were good. While we were dead in our trespasses, Christ died for us. Therefore, what do you need to do? All you need to do is to confess with your mouth the foundation of our confession, the foundation of our, of our profession. It's the word that is in you. The word is in your mouth. It is the word of faith that we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall not doubt in your heart, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's why we are here tonight. My friend, you already believe. You know you already believe. One thing is remaining, confessing with your Lord, with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord. Please pray with me tonight, right there where you are. Regardless of your, your Christian foundation, regardless of your denomination or background, right, pray with me right there where you are and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ I, have received your word. I have received your word. I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, all the that all the work for my salvation, for my salvation was, accomplished was accomplished by Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ when, he said, when he said, it is finished. It is finished. I, confess I confess that word. It is finished. It is finished. And right now, Right now, willingly, willingly of, my own accord, of my own accord, I open up my spirit, up my spirit that, you in, that you may come in and make me, and make me your, habitation. your habitation. I receive you this day, you this as, day my as my Lord and my Savior, and my Savior. Because, I pray, because I pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Congratulations, my friend. You are now born again. And the work was accomplished over 2,000 years ago by Jesus Christ. Now you can partake of the communion. Because in the communion, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. As we partake of the body that was broken, we remember the stripes. We remember the, uh, the blood that was shed. We re remember how many times the body was broken and blood was shed for our deliverance from our self-will, deliverance from, the, from poverty, deliverance from the curse of, of, of poverty, uh, de deliverance, de deliverance from self-will, and deliverance from sin. We re all this is put together in the communion. Therefore, as we partake of the communion tonight, may you receive that life that comes from God. Our Father and our God, 
We thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed so many times. As we partake of the communion, we declare that the effect of the communion shall be manifested in our lives, in our bodies, in our situations for your own glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. We, we partake of the communion the, uh, tonight in the, in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. You may serve your family. Thank you very much. We may partake of the bread together. Let us partake of the cup together. It is finished, my friend. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to struggle anymore. You can rely on the finished work at the cross of Calvary. That is the foundation of our salvation. That is the foundation of our confession, that it is finished. Now you receive your healing, receive your miracle, receive your deliverance, receive new ideas, receive the wisdom of God upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I pray that as you wake up tomorrow morning, you will wake up a new person. You will wake up a healed person. You will wake up excited at the revelation that you have received. In Jesus' name, amen. It is now time for us to worship the Lord with our substance. And it is important for you to always remember that worship is not complete before you place your offering on the altar. So right there where you are, prepare your offering. You can use our m -Pesa pay bill number. The, the, the numbers on, are on the screen. Or, and then after you have done that, please send me the confirmation. Or you can, you can do a direct transfer from your account to the church account. The church account is in Equity Bank and uh, the account number is on the screen. Send me the confirmation uh, so I can get back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Or you can also use the Equity Bank m -Pesa pay, pay bill number 247247. The church account is on the screen. Send me the confirmation. We shall communicate. Or you can write a check payable to Deliverance Church LCCI or Deliverance Church majestic city send me the confirmation or a picture of the check and i will get back to you may the lord richly bless you as you do that may you know the prosperity of god and realize that the curse of poverty has been broken out of your life and rise up in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you Joyce to give us the timing the, uh, the timing for, for our services and invite you to our worship services, which are powerful. Come on, Joyce. Amen. Thank you. What a powerful word that we have received tonight. Thank you so much for having been with us to the very end. And now I want to take this opportunity and welcome you to our Sunday services. We usually have two locations and you can visit any of them. The first one is the House of Bread that is located uh, on, uh, at KPCU building along Helselasi Avenue. As you head down to the Marigiti Market, the wholesale market, you'll see KPCU building. That is where House of Bread is located and we have two services. The first one being at 8 a.m. and the second service is at 10.30 a.m. Please come and visit us. The second location is the Majestic City Church, which is the, located along Kangundo Road at a stage called Makongeni Stage. And there we only have one service that happens at 10.30 a.m., a place where you come, be blessed by the word of God, by the worship, and the people, all of us there, we love visitors, and we are so looking forward to seeing you this coming Sunday. Thank you so much and have a good night. The Lord bless you. We love you. We value you. We're praying for you. May you walk in the victory of the word. May you walk in the victory of, you, of the word and your life will never, ever be the same again. Tell somebody what you have heard. Tell somebody what you have received and please write to us. Communicate with us and we'll keep in touch. God bless you.